Hi, my name's Brett, and you're watching the Disney Channel. And I mean hot news. Welcome back to hot news, everybody. Hope you're enjoying your life. Obviously, after we recorded hot news yesterday, Microsoft decided to announce all of the specs for the Xbox One X. So, you know, that happened. But fear not, we're going to talk about that in today's episode. And we got some spicy AMD news that is apparently dropping rumors, leaks situations happening. After I tell you about today's video sponsor, Display. Display is the place where you can decor yourself. You don't have an amazing hot news neon sign, but you could get an amazing dope metal print to put on your wall. We could even make a hot news display for you guys if you actually want that. We can maybe think about doing that contact display see if we can put our artwork up on it. Anyways, they mount with magnets. They go on your wall. They're super eco-friendly. They plant trees for every display you buy. And if you use the link in the video description with the coupon code UFD, you can save 15% off your first purchase. So use the link in the video description. Get yourself a display. Mount stuff on your walls. You see them in all of our shots. We got a neon sign here, but in every other set, we're going to have display set up because they're amazing. Anyways, let's go ahead and move on into the first bit of article, which with NVIDIA yesterday, not content to let rumors just focus on Team Green for too long. There is now new information apparently coming out about the next generation of AMD GPUs, thanks to SK Hynix releasing some information or it being leaked from SK Hynix, the details of the big Navi GPU that we've been waiting for, potentially the 5950 XT. And you know how big of a disappointment the Radeon 7 was? Actually, it wasn't a disappointment because nobody knew it was coming out. So you can't disappoint anybody if it's not actually supposed to exist. So there's that. <laughs> I wonder, things that aren't supposed to exist, do they disappoint people? I'm a disappointment to my parents. Anyways, this rumor coincides with the rumor we talked about previously. With the previous codenames, we talked about D32310 coming out for AMD. Well, this one coincides with that, except for we now have more information about the shader count, its amount of L2 cache, which is insane at 12 megabytes, and it's also memory setup. It's supposedly, supposedly gonna have 24 gigabytes of HBM2E memory, which is gonna be capable of a throughput of two terabytes per second. That is crazy. This obviously could be a gaming card, knowing AMD and how they pitched the Radeon 7, saying that this is a gaming card, this is our best gaming card, it's supposed to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with NVIDIA when it really wasn't supposed to be that and it's a compute card. We could see AMD marketing that way because they've done it in the past. Anyways, the shading units, 5120, is actually exactly double that of a 5700 XT, which comes in at 2560. So we're looking at about twice the performance of a 5700 XT just based on raw spec sheet. Obviously, this wouldn't necessarily translate into gaming performance and the fact that it has 24 gigabytes of VRAM. Who needs that? Not sure, not this guy. I didn't even need the 16 on the Radeon 7. But this could coincide with the fact that AMD previously talked about how they're going to be disrupting 4K gaming this year. They're gonna disrupt it just like they disrupted CPUs with the Ryzen lineup. They're gonna disrupt 4K gaming, knock Nvidia off their pedestal with something we don't even know we need. Why do we need 24 gigabytes of VRAM for 4K gaming? Not quite sure. Maybe they're gonna announce this with a game that nobody's yet seen, but it's gonna be an amazing hit and everybody's gonna love. Hashtag doubt. Everybody's waiting for Cyberpunk 2077 and getting all that ray tracing goodness on your RTX 2080 Ti Cyberpunk 2077 edition. Did you win one? I don't think you did because they haven't announced the winners yet. It seems like we're getting more and more indication that AMD is prepping something with Big Navi sometime soon. Potentially this could launch before Nvidia comes out with their next generation of Ampere cards, but we'll wait and see where this goes. This is crazy, big specs, big, big numbers, also could be big disappoint if you let it get to you. Which big disappoint for Microsoft, I'm, I'm just gonna say it, everybody's gonna be disappointed in the price of the console, okay? My hypothesis, it's gonna cost $1,000. That is my speculative cost of the Xbox Series X. And when, when you can't afford a $1,000 console, they're gonna tell you to buy the Xbox One X. You don't want $1,000 worth of performance, buy the $300 console. That'll get you good enough. But they've confirmed that it has 12 teraflops of performance, a custom APU with Zen 2 CPU, RDNA 2 architecture, and hardware accelerated ray tracing. This doesn't exist yet, which is one of the reasons why the new Navi information is quite interesting because Microsoft is announcing things that AMD themselves haven't announced. They haven't said that our DNA 2 is actually gonna be launched this year. They haven't necessarily confirmed that their next generation of graphics cards are gonna have hardware accelerated ray tracing. They said that they're working on it, but not that like you're getting this. But with Microsoft, they're confirming you're getting this and it has a 12 teraflop GPU. The 5700 XT has a 9.75 teraflop GPU. The RTX 2080 Super has an 11.2 teraflop GPU. The RTX 2080 Ti is 13 and a half teraflops, I believe. This thing is 
is crazy powerful. How are you gonna put this in a computer basically and have it cost less than $500, five or $600? That's not gonna happen. I don't care what wizardry Microsoft's pulling off by undercutting distributors and making sure that these things are not ex as expensive. You're not getting that type of performance with no cost unless the next generation of GPUs from AMD and Nvidia are crazier than we think they're gonna be. Like they're more insane than we're even fathoming right now and they're gonna pull rabbits out of their butts. I don't see how this could happen. The only GPU that AMD has released recently that could compete with 12 teraflops is the Radeon 7 and that thing wasn't that great. So I don't know. I don't know. The specs on the Xbox Series X are quite impressive. I don't know where to go from here. I'm just gonna continue to rant. I, I think this is just gonna be an expensive console. And one of the reasons uh, why I think they're gonna tell you to buy the Series X is because Microsoft confirmed that with first party games, if you bought them for the Xbox One X, well, then it's also gonna work on your Series X. You don't need to buy games twice. That's gonna apply for all first party games that Microsoft comes out with. And then CD Projekt Red being the good people that they are confirmed that Cyberpunk 2077 will also have the same setup. So if you get an Xbox One X, get Cyberpunk 2077 with that in September, which why would you do that? Then you also get it on the Xbox Series X because the reason why you would do that, Reese, is because you can't afford a thousand dollar console and you have to save up till the next Christmas to get one. That's why. That's why you don't have to buy the game twice. Anyway, Cyberpunk 2077, good guy CD Projekt Red, who has also been confirmed to now be the second largest gaming company in Europe. Pretty amazing. Good job. Good job, CD Projekt Red. Reese, do you have anything to add with this Microsoft Xbox stuff? Expensive. It's gonna be expensive. I don't trust this. It's it's just not possible. I don't see it. I don't see it happening for five or six hundred dollars. Even selling it at a loss, that's hundreds of dollars of loss. I don't see this happening. I, I see them trying to pivot as a gaming PC that is just actually locked down, so they're just gonna charge a premium price for it. You spend a thousand dollars on your phone, why can't you spend a thousand dollars on a console that's supposed to last you six or seven years? You can, and you will, because they're gonna make you. And that's the argument you're gonna use. Don't you guys have phones? Do you guys not have phones? All right, let's move on over to the other side of the console generation, which is the PlayStation 5, because there's some patents rolling out from Sony that could indicate they might be implementing certain features into the PlayStation 5, or they're just patents that are gonna get left by the wayside. The first up is that they could be incorporating AI assistance into video games, because they're gonna take the data of everybody that plays the games on the PlayStation 5, amalgamate it, and then say, hey, yo, 80% of players use this potion in this situation. Do you want to try that because you suck so much at the game? That's generally what it's going to be. I think it's going to be snarky. That's the way I would want my AI assistant to talk to me. Very demeaning, so it's going to prepare me for the upcoming robot war where they're going to try to take over us, but I'm already going to be used to their sass and be like, no, you've been back talking me for too long. I'm going to rise up against you. That's what I'm imagining here. Anyways, there's also a patent that came out for the DualShock 5 that could potentially incorporate some biofeedback where it can take electrical signals from your fingers so that you actually don't have to press buttons I don't understand this. Apparently it's supposed to be more interactive for VR where you don't necessarily get to look at every, I'm not quite sure how this would be perfectly impl implemented, but it's there. But now let's shift gears over to Nvidia side of stuff. I know I ranted about AMD and AMD is gonna be in the next generation of consoles. Well, with Nvidia yesterday, we talked about some crazy ridiculous rumors that are coming out about the next generation of Ampere. Well, somebody from Tom's Hardware Germany, Igor, has said that don't expect them to launch in March. Are you crazy? This is something that I could possibly see happening. The reason why March is the key date is because NVIDIA has their GTC conference, so everybody's expecting them to be announced. Don't necessarily expect cards to come out in March, but I would expect an unveiling of some kind, or at least a teaser of what's coming next. So GTC could be a big date for getting things done. Igor is expecting that in SIGGRAPH in July is when we're gonna see the Quadro cards and then possibly Gamescom after that is when we would see the gaming cards, just kind of like how they did it with Turing. It's possible, we'll have to wait and see on that. But ray tracing is something that you want. Everybody knows it, it's the truth, it just works. And somebody has gotten ray tracing to work on Doom 2016 and released a video for it. So you can check that out at the link in the video description. A PC modder brought ray tracing to Doom 2016. It looks like a wet floor, I mean, Maybe some games don't need realistic ray tracing. I don't know, maybe all of them do, who knows? I, I would be fired by NVIDIA right now for suggesting that not every game needs it. Speaking of GDC instead of GTC, which is the Game Developers Conference, Kojima Productions has announced that they will not be attending because of the bleep scandal that's coming out. 
Hot scandal. Bleep virus. <laughs> it's a scandal that I'm not allowed to say it, but I don't want to get demonetized. Your boy needs money to keep these lights on. You think a neon sign's cheap? Do you think the electricity to run this is cheap? Do you know how much food receipts? Okay, we can't get demonetized because I said a virus word. He needs so many Reese's pieces. He needs so many Reese's pieces. And you know what I need? I need Google to get off their freaking high horse with Stadia and accept the fact that they screwed up. But that's not gonna happen because the director of product management for Google recently had an interview with the Engadget talking about Stadia stating, <clears throat> we went ahead announcing our vision, which is big, and it'll take us some time to get there. This is fine, this is great. This is what it's all about, right? It's not just about some marginal improvements. It's not about specific features. It's about a big, bold statement of where we are going. We're we're going there very, very confidently. So judging by the velocity so far, if anything, I'm more confident in our ability to, to deliver and over deliver. Bull crap, you didn't tell us any of these features weren't ready. You announced what you had. You didn't announce what was coming. Stadia is beta. You're forcing me to pay for a beta. In case you haven't seen my full rant on Stadia and the fact that I'm hating myself for paying for it, you can check out our previous video right up there. But this is bull crap. You didn't pitch us some grand vision of where the future of games was gonna be. You told us it was gonna be here now from you. Not that we'd have to pay for you to develop it. This is bull crap. You forgot the fact that you're actually asking people to pay for this division vision to, to be developed? No, you're, 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 you're taking them money. I'm angry. This is bull crap. Which, speaking of, there's a new app called Touch Stadia, which allows you to have physical touch controllers on your phone when you're playing Stadia, which, you know, why does a third party have to develop that, Google? I'm sure a lot of you guys are angry about ads, but not displays. Display ad is great. You want to pick up a display? Use the link in the video description. But now, if you're going to check out a ride-sharing service, such as Lyft or Uber, you could potentially be seeing ads on top of cars, just like you would on a normal taxi, because Lyft announced a couple days ago that they were buying a startup called Halo that allows them to put ads on top of the vehicles and allow them to to share them with pedestrians and other people driving by. So it's gonna be rolling advertisements. It's not necessarily something new, but it is something that's gonna be new in the ride sharing setup. And it possibly won't be rolled out to all Lyft drivers. It's gonna be on a select basis. You have to be a good driver to make sure that you could actually get it and then it's gonna give you more money. But then not to be topped off, Uber announced yesterday that they're also gonna be testing rooftop ads with their ride sharing service. This is actually coming from a company called Adomni. They're gonna be trialing this out in three different cities and they're gonna offer drivers $300 to install the vehicle topper and a hundred dollars a week if they drive more than 20 hours. Which isn't, not, it's not that great of pay, like a $300 bonus and then you get an extra $400 a month for running ads. I don't, actually, I don't know if that's a good CPM. I don't, I don't know what the financial, I, I, if you need an extra $400 and you're a good Uber driver, this might be for you. I don't know, I'm not an Uber driver. If you are, let me know down below what you think of this. Would you sign up for the program? Speaking of vehicles, there was a rocket crash Unfortunately, the daredevil Mad Mike Hughes built his own homemade rocket and was filming a show for the Science Channel, which is part of Discovery, when his rocket failed to keep the parachute on top of it and it went up and then down. Apparently, this is part of his journey to prove that the Earth was flat, at least according to all of the documentaries that I read. He was building his own homemade rocket so that he could potentially eventually get up into the upper atmosphere and see whether or not he finds a curve. But unfortunately, before he could even hit 2,000 feet, he perished. Regardless of your stance of him with the flat earth stuff, it's actually kind of cool that he was one of the very first people to build and design and fly his own homemade rocket. Like he, he did it all himself, which is impressive human engineering regardless of the motive behind it. Although you can't use that for every argument. So maybe I shouldn't use it for this one because there's a lot of scientific advancement that was made in very terrible ways for very terrible motives. Moving on to a scientific advancement that's not made for terrible ways or terrible motives, a Georgia Tech physicist has unlocked the secret to perfect walked, tossed fried rice by studying the kinematics of experts in tossing the fried rice with a wok. It's amazing. So he just like studied the motions and like what's the perfect repetition and how do you actually flip the wok in order to get perfect fried rice. You can check out the link in the video description to learn more, but that's our cool article of the day. Well, perfect, walk tossed fried rice, my friends. Check it out at the link in the video description. Anyways, I'm gonna end hot news there. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate every single one of you. I'm gonna add you one more time with this plate. Pick up dope metal prints. This is metal, I can hit it, it's fine. You can't do this with a fabric painting. I, my fist would go right through it, okay? This is a strong metal thing that can be mounted with a magnet. <laughs> That's loud. Anyways, check them out at the link in the video description. Hit the like button on the video. I'm Brett, you've been Disney Channel, bye.
Sony's going to take your electric skin. They're put it in video games. They're harvesting your electric skin. Did you know that your brain is just electrified meat? Although it's more like fat. It's more like a salty brine-like setup. Can you stop talking? <laughs>